On March 14, 1692, Martha Corey went to Thomas Putnam's house to see Anne Putnam Jr., who had accused her of witchcraft the day before. As she entered the house, and fell into fits of choking, blinding and her hands twisted in a most grievous manner. You are doing this to me. There is a yellow bird sucking on your hand between your index finger and middle finger. I will come and see it. So you may. Before Anne got to her, Martha put one of her fingers in the place where the yellow bird was sucking and gave it a hard rub. As she tried to go to Martha, she fell down blinded. I see nothing. As the visit went on, and Putnam Jr. and Mercy Lewis had fits and accused Martha Corey of afflicting them. On March 19, 1692, the magistrate issued an arrest warrant for Martha Corey. Since it was late on a Saturday and arrests were not allowed to be carried out on Sundays, Martha was free till she could be arrested on Monday the 21st. On the morning of March 20th, Martha Corey dressed in her Sunday best and went to church as she always did. However, this Sunday's worship was unlike any others she had been to. This time she had been accused of being a witch. As the other parishioners entered the church, they gazed in disbelief that Martha would dare to show her face in a sacred place after bringing such evil onto the aggrieved children, who were also in attendance. As Reverend Lawson, a guest minister for the day, began his sermon, the afflicted girls shouted out the appearance of Martha Corey Spectre sitting on a beam with a yellow bird. March 21, 1692, Martha Corey was arrested and brought to be questioned before the magistrates. You are now in the hands of authority, tell me now why you hurt these persons. I do not. Who doth? Pray, give me leave to go to prayer. We do not send for you to go to prayer, but tell me why you hurt these. I am an innocent person. I never had to do with witchcraft since I was born. I am a gospel woman. Do not you see these complaints of you? The Lord shows his power to discover the guilty. Tell us who hurts these children. I do not know. If you be guilty of this fact, do you think you can hide it? The Lord knows. Well, tell us what you know of this matter. Why I am a gospel woman. And do you think I can have to do with witchcraft too? How could you tell then that the child was bid to observe what clothes you wore when some came to speak with you? Cheevers interrupted her and bid her not begin with a lie. Who told you that? He said the child said. Cheever interrupted her again and said, you speak falsely. Why did you ask if the child told what clothes you wore? My husband told me the others told. Who told you about the clothes? Why did you ask that question? Because I heard the children told what clothes the others wore. Hathorn asked Giles Corey if he had told his wife about this. The old man shook his head no. Did you not say your husband told you so? Martha stood silent. Who hurts these children now look upon them? I cannot help it. Did you not say you would tell the truth? Why you asked that question? How come you to the knowledge? I did but ask. You dare thus to lie in all this assembly. You are now before authority. I expect the truth. You promised it, speak now and tell me who told you what clothes. Nobody. How came you to know that the children would be examined what clothes you wore? Because I thought the child was wiser than anybody if she knew. Give an answer you said your husband told you. He told me the children said I afflicted them. How do you know what they came for, answer me this truly. Will you say how you came to know what they came for? I had heard speech that the children said I troubled them, and I thought they might come to examine me. One of the afflicted shouted out, there is a man whispering in her ear. What did he say to you? We must not believe all that these distracted children say. Cannot you tell what that man whispered? I saw nobody. But did not you hear? No. If you expect the mercy of God, you must look for it in God's way by confession. 
Do you think to find mercy by aggravating your sins? A true thing. Look for it then in God's way. Give glory to God and confess. But I cannot confess. Do not you see how these afflicted do charge you? We must not believe distracted persons. Catherine read aloud the evidence against Martha, and others stood to confirm the evidence. What can I do? Many rise up against me. Why confess? So I would if I were guilty. Now tell me the truth, will you, why did you say that the magistrates and ministers' eyes are blinded you would open them? Martha laughed and denied it. Do you believe these children are bewitched? They may, for all I know, I have no hand in it. Who is your God? The God that made me. What is his name? Jehovah. Do you know any other name? God Almighty. How many gods are there? One. The marshal released Martha's hands and her accusers were afflicted. Do not you see these children and women are rational and sober as their neighbors when your hands are fastened? Immediately they were seized with fits when your hands were free. The marshal said, she hath bit her lip, and immediately the afflicted were in an uproar. Why you hurt these, or who doth? I do not hurt them. After the examination, that afternoon Martha was committed to Salem prison where she would be held till future questioning was needed. On September 22, 1692, Martha Corey was brought to Proctor's Ledge to be hanged. This video was produced by 1692 before and after. In memory of those falsely accused and persecuted during the Salem Witch Trials. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like and subscribe button. For more information about the Salem Witch Trials visit 1692beforeandafter.com.